How's it going Guardians? Shifty here and in today's video I'm going to be doing a solo flawless run of the Legend Shattered Realm Forest of Echoes. In this video I'm going to be using a Warlock. Now of the Legend difficulty Shattered Realms this one is actually quite difficult. Part of the reason I chose a Warlock is for survivability. Alright so there's no need for me to drag this intro out so in a moment I'm going to go over my loadout but before I do if you end up enjoying the video make sure to hit that like button and if you're new to my channel don't forget to subscribe as well. Alright, as I already mentioned, I ran a Warlock and I'm using Well of Radiance and for my Exotic I went with the Stag. Then for my Weapon Selection I have the Wither Horde. Then in my Energy Slot I have the Imperial Needle Void Bow and this is for Void Shields and for Overload Champions. And in my Heavy Slot I have the Corsair's Wrath, Solar Linear Fusion Rifle and this is for Unstoppable Champions as well as Solar Shields. And for my Armor Mods I'll just quickly show you each piece of armor and if you need to see anything in more detail, just pause the video. Overall, the name of the game with this loadout is to try and reduce damage as much as possible and to also heal as much as possible. That's why I went with Well of Radiance, the Stag, and I'm also using the Protective Light mod. Anyway, that is it for my loadout in this one. I will be offering commentary throughout the run and there will be timestamps if you want to skip to a particular part. Otherwise, let's jump right into it. If you do check out the modifiers for this activity, you'll notice there are shields of all types. You're going to find arc shields, void shields, and solar shields. And I do want to mention that there are a significant number of all three of them. Also, I want to say that I'm doing a solo flawless run, but if you're looking to do this just to get the solo triumph, then you can die as much as you want, you'll just have to restart encounters. Circling back to shields, I don't have any sort of arc damage, so taking out arc shields is going to be a little bit tricky. I shouldn't have any sort of problem with void shields or solar shields. During the second beacon there's going to be a significant number of arc shields and to take those out I'm going to be using wither horde, my bow, and I'm going to try to use grenades as well. Alright if you've been paying attention I've just been clearing the enemies out on my way to the church here. Now I'm going to go ahead and start the first beacon alignment. And here we're going to have a ton of Void Shields as well as Solar Shields. There's going to be Solar Shields on the Taken Knights, and there's going to be Void Shields on the Taken Acolytes and the Taken Wizards. So the goal here is to try to break the shields and then take them out with Wither Horde or Grenades. I'm going to be using my Rift whenever I need it to get that damage reduction and healing. And I'm going to try to save my Well of Radiance for emergencies once it's up. As you can see there's a significant number of enemies and with all that fire you can understand why I chose to use solar damage resistance on my chest armor. As you can see I try to break shields and then I use my Wither Horde on the enemies after the fact. You can see there is a wizard above in the area. If there weren't so many knights right now, I would try to focus on that wizard. But once most of the knights are cleared out, I like to break the wizard shield and then while it's stunned, get a wither horde shot on it. At this point, you can see an overload champion spawned. I got it right as it spawned and then I used my linear fusion rifle for the most part to damage it.
I do want to mention I chose solar and void weapons primarily because I think this first beacon is harder because you're in a more enclosed space. Having both solar and void weapons on hand to immediately take out enemies is going to help clear out the space and not get overrun. If you haven't noticed already, during this part there are quite a few take and thrall. Those don't have any shields and you can place Wither Horde down beneath you as they approach you. So I decided to go ahead and use my Well of Radiance here because I knew there were some knights that spawned and I knew there was some take and thrall around me. Overall, I knew I was getting overrun. We're just over 90%, so I'm almost done with this particular beacon. At this point, there is another wizard. Unfortunately, I missed my Wither Horde shot, so I just finished it off with my bow. Also, at the end here, there is going to be an unstoppable champion, as you see. I stunned it with my Linear Fusion Rifle, then used Wither Horde and finished it off with my Linear Fusion Rifle as well. And just like that, I'm done with the first beacon. Since I have all of the Wayfinder's Compass upgrades, I'm going to go ahead and use them to take a shortcut to the next beacon. Since I am using a bow, I might as well try and take out some of the enemies that are across this gap here. Now I'm just going to use True Sight to use these platforms to get over there. There are still a few enemies left, so I'm going to have to be careful once I get over there. During the next beacon, there will be a ton of taken hobgoblins. Thankfully, they won't have any sort of energy shield, though. So I activated safe passage here, but I also kind of forgot that uh, it spawned some additional enemies up here. So now I'm going to have to take those out before I can head to that second beacon. A couple of them do push somewhat aggressively, so I kind of have to backtrack a little bit here. I use my rift for my own safety there. I think there should be two solar enemies up here yet. And one of them left. Unfortunately, I did have to waste ammo taking these four enemies out. Here we're going to have a couple of Taken Scions as well as a Taken Centurion with an Arc Shield. There's going to be a ton of those Arc Shields during the second beacon. So it's as good a time as any to start the second beacon. I'm going to try to stay around the outskirts of this area to take enemies out from. You can see a couple of Taken Centurions up there. So I did get a Wither Horde on that one. Anytime that I have a Rift available for this second beacon, I'm going to be using it. Whoa. 
this one can also be pretty tough. Enemies just keep spawning, and with these arc shields, I'm having a hard time taking out the Centurions in time. I'm taking advantage of the auto-loading holster on my Wither Horde to shoot it around me to take out some of the Scions. You also notice there is an ogre during this section. I did get a Wither Horde on it to start things off. Again, using a rift for my own safety for that damage reduction and to heal me. That ogre was almost down just for my one Wither Horde shot. Again, I want to try to clear some of these Scions out and then I can focus on the Centurions. So my next goal here is to be able to get Wither Horde shots on them. In this case, I also got grenades on them. I almost forgot that there is an unstoppable champion during this section. This shouldn't be too difficult to deal with. And at this point, I can finally focus on these Centurions. So I'm going to try to take out as many of these orbs as I can. Luckily, that Centurion was finishable. And now that I'm down to one Centurion, it should be much easier. However, we're only going to be about halfway through this beacon after I take this one out. The shield is gone, which is nice. And now more enemies are going to be spawning, and this is where you're going to find some hobgoblins. Thankfully, with my frenzy bow, I can one-shot them with a shot to the head. And at first, it kind of seems like you might not have any centurions, but centurions do end up spawning during the second half of Beacon 2. So just be aware of that. There will also be an overload champion at one point. Thankfully, the stag gave me my rift back there, and I was able to use it immediately. I imagine the Overload Champion should be coming around soon. It just spawned, if you saw, in the bottom left corner there. At this point, it's as good a time as any to use my Well of Radiance. See if I can take the Centurion out here. And the Overload did come this way. I'm going to try and stun it just for my own safety here. And all of the champions for Beacon 2 should be down now. In fact, we're at 98%, so once I take this Centurion out, I should be done. After this, I'm going to try to immediately make my way to the third beacon. If you head over to the edge of the cliff, you can actually jump down to the platforms over here. Use my Wither Horde over there to take the enemies out. There's some enemies behind me, so I have to be careful, but I want to try to take some of these ones out first. And all there is left is this Taken Vandal here. And the portal is right here for the third beacon, so I'm going to head through that. If you want to challenge yourself, you can try to do this solo and do it in under 25 minutes to get that weekly challenge done. Otherwise, I would recommend doing that particular challenge with a team. As I mentioned earlier, if you want the solo triumph, don't worry about dying, you can just keep repeating encounters until you get it. So as you saw at the beginning of this, I took out two glowing acolytes and those were shielding the boss.
After the boss is de-shielded, you would notice that a bunch of ads spawn. I'm trying to take those out still. And then I want to damage the boss here. And now I got it to move on, so it should be on the left side of the arena. There's going to be some more of those glowing acolytes, which I'm going to take out. They do end up jumping across here a little bit. When these glowing acolytes are gone, it's going to de-shield the boss, but more adds are going to spawn. And this overload champion here. So I'm going to focus on the champion first, and then I'll deal with the adds after that. And just like that, that wave of ads is clear, and I'm free to focus on the boss again. As you notice, when it moved to that right side of the arena, we got some more glowing acolytes. And when those are gone, we're going to have another ad spawn. But instead of worrying about that, I'm going to try to focus on damaging the boss. And just like that, the boss is down. And there it is. That's a solo flawless completion of the Legend Shattered Realm Forest of Echoes. I hope that this video helped you out if you're heading in with a team or if you're heading in solo. If you ended up enjoying the video, make sure to like and subscribe. I just want to thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.